Hey everybody, welcome to Antalya, Turkey. This city of two and a half million is Turkey's fifth largest city and it sits right on the Mediterranean. The climate here is fantastic and the cost of living is unbelievable. So today we're going to meet up with a United States expat living here in Antalya, Turkey. So come along as we interview Miss Green and talk to her about her cost of living and her experience here in Antalya. And we'll also take a look at where she lives. So sit back, relax, and let's get to know a little bit about Miss Green. Miss Green's neighborhood has quite a few different restaurants and shops, and there's even a farmer's market on Tuesdays underneath that overhang right there. Now, she can do a 12 minute walk to the beach and hit the promenade. This promenade along the beach stretches for a couple miles. You can come out here and get a good hour's walk going up and down this promenade. And there's a bicycle trail so that if you wanted to come out and go biking or rollerblading. Not to mention, there's a beach. So if you wanted to go swimming, especially in the warmer times of the year, this is the place to do it. This beach is known as Kanyalti, and this place is happening, especially during the summer months. And it's a very popular location for expats that want to come and live in Turkey year-round. So let's go and visit with Miss Green and check out her apartment, and check out her lifestyle and her cost of living. We parked where the farmer's market is on Tuesday, and Miss Green led us through her security and into her complex. Um, I think about October, they drained the, they drained the um, swimming pools, and then they'll fill them back up in about May. Okay. And that's for every place here that has a uh, swimming pool in all of town. Okay, so they fill them up around May? Mm -hmm. The apartment felt like it was fairly new. The building was in good shape. Elevator was fast and we went right into the apartment and into the tour. Went through the main door and here's one of the bedrooms. This one's got the smaller bed and it's got a wardrobe here and this is furnished. There's a view of the pool downstairs and there is a gazebo over there to entertain with friends. And we'll come out this direction. It's Julie looking good as always. Say hello. There we go. And we're gonna come over this direction. Bathroom is good size. It's got a bathtub even. And here's the master bedroom. Pretty spacious. Has a queen size bed. Built in again, this is all furnished. Coming over this direction towards the main living room. And look at these built-ins here for storage. Got a four burner stove top, a dishwasher, and full size refrigerator. There's the couches, dining room area, and there is a balcony. And this is where you would dry your clothes. And again, a view of the pool out there towards the road and the main entrance area. Thank you for letting us see your place. It's actually quite lovely. Um, Thank you. I, I sound like Julie there. It's quite lovely. <laughs> what's, a, what's a good word to say? That's an awesome place. Uh, <laughs> That's very American. Is, is, that, is that better, honey? What do you think? Lovely or awesome? Sure, awesome. That's person. awesome. Okay. Okay. Well, That's an awesome. awesome place. So, Miss Green, tell us about you and how did you end up here in Turkey? Well, I ended up in Turkey because of um, the pandemic. Turkey is pretty pragmatic when it comes to the situation right now going on with COVID. So it's not having the same harsh responses maybe you're, you'll see in Western Europe or U.S., Australia, some other places out there. So we're not going to delve too deeply in there because people like to get censored or people get censored for talking about this too much. So we're just going to 
Keep it simple. I had three main criteria, but um, I wanted there to be two seasons. I wanted to be a place where I can ride horses very often and where I could go swimming every day. You can definitely do the swimming. I didn't know that you could ride horses here, so there's yeah, horse riding true. around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm a country girl, so I have to have that outlet. That's awesome. That's bad. I, mean, I, got, I guess that's going to be the word for the video. Awesome today. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, so you have horseback riding here locally, and you, you came here because of um, the COVID situation. But you're... Um, you're, you've been an expat for a long time, traveling different places. I've been an expat for 10 years. Um, it all started when I got my master's degree, and my parents gave me a ticket to Costa Rica, um, you know, as my prize for getting that degree. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's cool. That's a good gift. Yeah, it was nice, to be honest. It was a two-week vacation to Costa Rica. The first week was just traveling around. The second week was staying with the host family. Mm -hmm. And that uh, first day after staying with the host family, I knew I never wanted to... Um, not be an expat <laughs> okay yeah i mean expat life could be fun it's adventurous and um and so you're kind of like a slow traveler you just kind of stay for a fairly long place when you go places and um turkey you know it's not on a lot of americans radar for whatever reasons media out there but what do you think about turkey and and safety here i mean you're you're a single female and you're here um, having an adventure and you've been here for now about going on three months. What do you feel about Turkey and the safety and how people treat you? Well, I first visited Istanbul in 2015 and I stayed for 10 days. Mm -hmm. I was working in Oman at the time, the country Oman, okay. and um, I had a blast. It was just wonderful. The food was great in uh, Istanbul. The people were just amazing. They were so kind and friendly. Uh, and I really mean that. I don't mean that just as, you know, parents, but they're seriously super friendly. And then um, <clears throat> I just enjoyed the, there was a sense of safety when I was in Istanbul. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll never forget that I had so much fun. I, I had a fake wedding in Istanbul. <laughs> I had a fake wedding in Istanbul. You know, okay. you go to these uh, malls and they have where you can dress up and uh -huh. things like that. I know. And I just never forgot my time. Like, it was just really an awesome trip. It was just so much fun. Back to back to back. Everything was packed, you know, things to do. I don't ever want to leave this place, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. I feel like this is where I'm going to be. I love <laughs> Antalya. It's a beautiful city. I have no desire to move ever again. It gives me exactly what I want. I would say the biggest reason that I knew that uh, Eastern Europe was safety was because of uh, Belgrade. Mm -hmm. And when I was in Belgrade, I was out all night every night uh nobody would bother you people were minding their business you minded your first and there was never uh anything to be scared of no i love yeah. serbia so yeah I, I i will say you know julia we've been tra traveling around a lot of countries outside of uh, uh the western europe but a lot of eastern europe and balkans and we have felt so safe and it's 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 been great everywhere mm -hmm. that yes. we've gone and and i will say here we are in a uh country that you know, some people perceive as dangerous. Maybe they've seen one too many Liam Neeson movies. Um, <laughs> He's you know, saying that because we saw one last night. <laughs> we did. Um, and we're like, oh, that's Istanbul. But yeah, it, it doesn't look like <laughs> Liam Neeson's Istanbul. So it, you know, I would let Julie um, go out without me accompanying her in the evening hours. And I wouldn't think twice. I wouldn't think that she's going to be kidnapped and held for ransom and that I'm going to have to go and play Liam Neeson and kick down doors. Um, I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> but yeah, so, so here you have a single female loving life here in Turkey. Yeah, and so I think Belgrade uh, really helped out Turkey, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think it really, if you go to Belgrade and you feel that Eastern European vibe, it really helps out all the other places in Eastern Europe. And it's the same thing here. I go yeah. out when there, there are times that I'm hungry yeah. at nighttime. Uh, when I first got here and I didn't have any food, and I just leave and who cares, you know, 12 or 1 o'clock, nobody cared. You just go to the yeah. place that's open, they say hello, merhaba, and then... Get what you need and go. <laughs> oh, yes. And, and I know somebody's going to go in there. I'll tell you, it's Asia. Yes, it is Asia. Turkey is part in Europe and part in Asia. And sometimes you can kind of blur those lines a little You're bit. Asian. But we're, we're, we're in, um, technically, we're in Asia here in Antalya on the uh, Mediterranean. But it's, again, it's, it's all part of that uh, Balkan, Eastern Europe type of feel to it. Let me put two things out here in this question. Um, what does it cost for you to live here? We're gonna. I'm gonna ask you to explain your 
um, your rent situation, your out of pockets for like maintenance HOA, your groceries, your entertainment, transportation. And then uh, I think you have some fun things that you do online as a hobby on the education side that you know we'll want to share a little bit about that with the viewers as well and um and because I, I thought it was kind of cute some of the things you showed us the other day at the restaurant okay so yeah definitely thank you for that compliment yeah. as well um so i live here in Antalya, turkey um what i do for a living uh mostly is i trade stock options so that's how I'm able to live here uh, comfortably. And I live on about, what I'd say the on the high end, $1,000 a month. And on the low end, uh, 800 a month, right? Because... Uh, <clears throat> Fluctuation. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And if you know anything about Turkey, you'll totally get why I just said yeah. that. <laughs> when, whenever you look at going to another country, everybody, always make sure when you're looking at a foreign currency, you look at the last five years and always budget yourself at the worst exchange yes. rate and then you can hope for the hope for better but that way you can be a little bit safe on on what you can uh, budget for so um yeah about 800 to a thousand dollars uh and i just just mainstream just my apartment for rent costs uh, um four thousand five hundred lira for my apartment just the apartment nothing else mm -hmm. and then i do have to pay a maintenance fee um and we do have a groundskeeper so that goes directly to him 230 lira 230. per month Okay, so forty five hundred plus the two thirty. Mm -hmm. um, electric uh, was about twenty bucks per uh, well two hundred lira per month. Two hundred lira. And then the water was maybe one hundred. Maybe I, I don't quite remember the water. I paid it a very long time ago, okay. um, so I don't remember how much that cost. Uh, but it was pennies. So so we're looking at maybe about five thousand lira right now. Is that sound about right? <laughs> I would say. Okay. And then um, next week I'm introducing maid service or housekeeping service. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that'll be once a week and that's 200 lira. I do eat out a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> when I first got, got here, I ate out almost, I'd say a month and a half straight, ate out for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I spend about 150 um, lira per day mm -hmm. eating out. Okay. Um, I don't have to. I could cut that in half and, and probably still have the same food but a different experience um so yeah i could go to the pl a place right across from where i get my breakfast i can go there and probably get it for 15 lira okay. um but i just like to eat in a even though i've been an expat for 10 years i still like some of those uh comforts of of the u.s just to be yeah. honest right yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i'm we big all on do. yeah <laughs> i'm big on service and so that's why uh my food bill is a bit expensive when you're talking about yeah. three meals a day 30 days that's 90 meals for for that price uh, so it's almost nothing now we know that you're here legally so you're doing a residency <laughs> program of some sort so tell us about um what you're dealing with with residency and are you using medical coverage while you're here so Turkey has implemented J January 1st uh, new residency rules mm -hmm. and so you have to have a, a Turkish provider for your insurance in order to be in order to stay here legally after three months oh really yeah and so I will purchase that and so for the year it will cost me 1650 lira for the year now a lot of expats they are doing the I the I am global. Yeah, they're doing the I am global coupled with the Turkish okay. insurance because you have to have that Turkish provider in order to get the residency. But to actually use, so it's kind of like a um, I guess Americans would see it kind of like as a trick. It's not really mm -hmm. a trick, right? Because you're doing exactly what the government says. But the the one thousand six hundred fifty lira insurance probably won't cover much at all. Yeah, so it's a, it's a state insurance so they do the private insurance so they get the better facilities and and get the the better um uh, more, more richer coverage and then so with the i am global they're actually using that if they have to go to the um to the doctor for something mm -hmm. but they're just getting that um turkish insurance because the government says you have to have it in order to apply for your residency okay so it's an extra ten dollars or so a month for that turkish one um but yeah, you, you can run a quote on our stuff if it's something that is of interest to you. It sounds like it's not mandatory to have uh, coverage here for the residency from a private, but you do need to have the state program. Uh -huh. Okay. And, and your residency, um, 
you're in the midst of doing your residency yes. right now. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm getting a one year residency. Mm -hmm. um, and it's called a tourist residency. Okay. So they give you one year to explore Turkey, which honestly, if you if you didn't want to just stay in one place, and you would probably need more than a year to explore Turkey. Um, that's another thing, great thing about being here, right? That you won't outgrow Turkey. No. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm getting the one year residency, and um, the fees associated with it, things have changed since since January one. So I um, I would say roughly you're going to be paying about. Um, 2,000 to 3,000 lira to, mm -hmm. to do all of it. And it depends on what company you go with or what person you go with. Um, but I definitely would try to find someone who uh, spoke English, but I would find try to find someone that was Turkish to do it as well. We, we just had some friends tell us, it was yesterday, matter of fact, yes. that they did their residency program as a couple and it came out to about $500 total out of pocket. So. That'd be about spot on with what you're giving with two hundred fifty dollars approximately in in that conversion. So that's mm -hmm. that's that's good. So it makes it, this is one of the easiest countries to get residency in, and eventually we'll do a residency video for you to hear it from an expert. But um, I don't think there's an easier country that we've been to for residency. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> you're still kind of new here, so you're still establishing your. Um, your territory making new friends um, so if there are other expats in the area that uh, would like to uh, meet Miss Green or if there are um, expats or people are looking at coming to Antalya that are looking for a friend and would like some additional guidance and maneuvering here um, we're, we're gonna give your information right mm -hmm. you wanted to you wanted to volunteer for this right I'm not volunteering <laughs> here, I'm not. <laughs> I don't want to be during the headlights here. No, if, 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 if you don't want to be part of this, I'll cut this out. No, you're fine. You're okay. fine. Yeah. Okay. So you know, we'll, we'll put a little um, uh, way that you can uh, contact her down in the video description if you uh, would like some advice and uh, learn from her experiences. Your hobby or your, your TikTok, YouTube stuff. All right, so yes, I have a uh, degree in education management and I also have a bachelor's degree in uh, elementary education. Um, I am not uh, in a school system right now, but I'm still very passionate about kids and very passionate about helping parents uh, with the kids, right? Um, so I think that children being calm mm -hmm. and children uh, having their own outlet I think that really helps with the day-to-day -day living well, for the parents and for the kids. So I do have a YouTube channel that is Princess Honey Lullaby. Princess Honey Lullaby, okay. And it's cute. So this is their Princess Honey page. Let's go ahead and shoot open one of these videos for the viewers to see what it's like. And so this will just repeat on like this and stay for a long period of time. And this is like a 10 hour video. Nice, and you've got lots of different songs. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so the, some of those videos are pretty long, so like you would just put them on for your child while they're um, Sleep. in their crib or in their room. You just would be able to play the little video and have the music soothing them to sleep. And 100%, right. So you can do relaxation training with it or just sleep training with it. At lunchtime, when it's time for them to take a nap, you can put it on for them. And it signals, just like Pavlov, right? Mm -hmm. And so it signals, you know, it's time to go to sleep. And then you put it on at night, it signals it's time to go to sleep. And I, those videos are at least 10 hours long. It's kind of funny. Now, Julie and I, because we have our YouTube channel, obviously you know this, and we've got 150 videos approximately. When we leave our house and you know, we're in an Airbnb or something, we will put our videos on for the dogs. So they're seeing us and listening to us while we are away. Mm -hmm. So while they're not here right now, they were probably watching YouTube and listening to Julie and I. And you know, it's it, it, that's also kind of funny that you say that I have been working on a channel for dogs <laughs> <laughs> for relaxation. So I have all of my images ready. I have the music ready. Oh, but I, I, well, let, let me make a suggestion. <laughs> if you have pets, put Julie and I's playlist on and let them listen to us all day. And they can teach you and tell you about expat life out, outside the U.S. 
And then so I also do a uh, TikTok. It's really just an outlet for kids. You know, they see their parents all the time just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And the kids just really don't have anything. They're watching the images that their parents are watching. I don't necessarily know that that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> so I provided an outlet for the kids to have their own, right? And so they can scroll like they see their parents scrolling. Okay, Princess Honey, let's see what you've got on your TikTok. <laughs> and I'm seven. And it just gives the kids an outlet. And I think that's very important. Mm. I think it's super important. After the interview, we all went to Joy Coffee and Bistro. It's a little place that's maybe about 50 meters from where Miss Green lives. The bistro is really nice and clean and the food was great. This was our second time eating here with her. Now, if you're new to the channel, Julie and I, we're traveling the world with our two dogs. We're trying to see what it's like to live in different places and we're sharing our experiences with you. We'll do the tourist things. We'll have our adventures, but we'll also do interviews with expats and foreigners living in a new country. We'll also talk to residency experts quite often to find out how you can gain residency. And we will also look at real estate and try to find out what it costs to buy a property or to rent in different locations. So if this is the first video you've watched, I encourage you to check out some of our other videos and some of the other countries we've been to as well. And of course, subscribe. If you'd like to follow us and see where we're going next, and learn about different locations. That's the best way. We typically stay one to three months in a location to really get the feel of what it's like to be somewhere. We don't just jump in and out of a location. So let's go ahead and check out our meal and we'll share the cost with you. And again, don't forget to give this video a like if you find the information useful. One thing that was really special about interviewing Miss Green, she was actually a viewer of ours and has been watching us for several months as we explored the Balkans and Eastern Europe. What a treat this was. Julie's got another salad. Yeah, she's happy. I'm getting one too. This is made with uh, orchids. So you can't really get this in other countries. It's a... Uh, only here and look I put some cinnamon in there and that's like this marshmallow tree and over here it's only sprite for her this is green usually i only have uh, orange juice but sprite today but you look nice <laughs> and you're still my favorite okay all right <laughs> besides the salad i had the vegetarian quesadilla Miss Green so had a good. chicken plate and Julie had a halimi salad. And for the meal for three of us, Morocco. including our drinks, came out to an equivalent of $19.96 or 270 Turkish lira. Hey, Miss Green, thank you for joining us today and telling us about your life. My pleasure. I, I think that there's going to be a lot of people uh, envious of, of how you're living your <laughs> life and might want to do the same thing. So as a reminder, Julie and I, we're traveling the world with our two dogs. We're trying to see what it's like to live in other countries, other places, and sharing our experiences and costs with you. So we hope that you're going to subscribe. Give this video a like if you found the content worthwhile. And until next time, have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.